Hi, my name is Nancy Eisman, and I'm an individual marital and family therapist at Healing Hearts of Indy in Indianapolis, Indiana. And the title for my video today is Fair versus Unfair. Um, this kind of came about because I was in a really interesting discussion on a topic on the topic of fairness. I mean, it was it was a really good discussion. So we're talking about how fair or not life can be. And I asked some questions to see how those in the group around me felt about the topic. So see how you would answer some of the questions that I asked. First of all, is the world fair? Is what happened to me as a kid, all the emotional wounds that I received, are those fair? Is someone cutting in line fair? Does the reasoning be behind their perceived unfair behavior matter? Like if they had a reason for cutting in line, does, does that change anything? What if no one gets hurt? What do you think? Well, take a minute and, and just ponder your ideas or your paradigm about fairness. My answer to the question, is life fair or not, was yes. Yes, life is fair. Yes, life is unfair. So this is gonna sound kinda weird, but I think it depends on who you ask. And I don't mean which person in the world you ask. I mean which part inside of you that you ask. So one of my colleagues, Kathy Henry, who's also a therapist at Healing Hearts, um, she describes a way to look at yourself on the inside and it helps to disentangle the myriad of thoughts, feelings, and reactions that you could have in any given situation. So she described it like this. She said that inside of us, we have an adult, an angry teenager, and a little child. Now, it's not a schizophrenic thing. It's just a way of thinking through things to help make sense of a complex set of thoughts and feelings. To explain further, a uh, little kid is the part of your heart that is easily offended and hurt. It's raw and sad from wounds. It's voraciously needy for attention, affection, and acceptance. And it pretty much thinks the world revolves around his or her perception. It's the core of your heart, the part that makes decisions based on emotion and can throw temper tantrums. And it's also the vulnerable part of you, the part that is hurting, the part that is so amazingly beautiful. It is innocent and faith-filled, abandoned. It's also immature and has a limited view of the world. The second part, angry teenager, is your psychological walls. It's your little kid's protector. It's your defenses personified inside. When someone hurts you, or even if you perceive someone threatening to hurt you, angry teenager comes out in force and kicks some backside. He or she is a prickly porcupine, a green ogre, a seven-foot monster with a bazooka and a foul mouth. So whenever you need to back anyone off who you perceive as threatening to hurt any wound a little kid might have, and adults not around to have strong boundaries, angry teenager jumps to front and center and takes over the show. When you recognize this angry teenager coming out to play, it's an indicator that someone has hurt you or infringed upon your boundaries. So the adult part is your inner parent. This is the one who everyone thinks should be running the show because that's who looks like the adult body we see walking around. Unfortunately, that's kind of rarely the case. Unless you've had a bit of recovery work under your belt, this is actually pretty unusual. Many folks have little kid and angry teenager running the show most, almost exclusively. That's the, the default or the reflexive setting. Those who have adult running the show, some of the time usually come across as overly responsible and critical. They generally have a voice in their head that sounds something like, 
Good grief, insert your name here. You really messed that up. You are so stupid, incompetent, a screw-up, or otherwise not good enough unless you perform perfectly, which you can't. The inner parent says to the inner child exactly what your parents said to you, verbally or non-verbally, expressing the messages that you heard while you were growing up, but only on a bullhorn and repeating it over and over. You can watch another video I made called Shut the Frau Up to get a better idea about this adult person, this type of adult person. So how does this analogy of little kid, angry teenager, and adult, how does that help us organize all these thoughts and feelings and reactions that I was talking about? If we can stop parenting ourselves in our own heads the way our parents wounded us when we were kids, it's not about blame, it just is what it is, we can start to love, accept, and care for the hurting little kid inside of us. Instead of having angry teenager come out to our friends and loved ones, you know, the ones we hurt the most, we can redirect that scary monster away from them and toward the mean, critical, or passive inner parent. We can begin to take responsibility for our own feelings and actions instead of blaming others for them. The adult becomes nicer, more nurturing, and more accountable inside for the only person it can control, itself. The little kid begins to heal while not only being heard, but also receiving the kind of parenting that he or she has always longed for and never gotten. It's a way of not abandoning yourself, and we can heal abandonment through that process. And as we do this, there becomes less and less need for the angry teenager. Okay, so back to fair versus unfair. So what if we ask the little kid inside of you whether or not he or she thinks life is fair. Is it fair for a child to be hurt, abused, abandoned, or otherwise unloved? Well, no, of course not. Each one of us is worthy of being loved and cared for perfectly. The problem is, none of us get it. No one. We're all wounded when we are little, and we build psychological walls to protect ourselves from the wounding. Thank goodness we do, because without those walls as a kid, we would not be able to stay sane. Therapy and recovery is about figuring out the walls we built, tearing them down to heal the wounds behind them, and then learning new, mature, and responsible or more differentiated ways of responding to painful stimuli. We can begin to see with new eyes and hear with new ears. So what if we ask angry teenager if life is fair? I think he or she would say, heck no, all these terrible people running around in the world hurting me, I'll kick their backsides. Nothing is fair and I won't ever think different. Angry teenager pouts and throws temper tantrums. Angry teenager is the one who plays the part of victim and keeps you stuck. Do you know anyone who sounds like this? Do you sound like this? You may have an actual angry teenager living in your house that sounds like this, right? Older people who still sound like this have a hurting little kid inside and an adult who's not doing their job with boundaries and nurturing and having a non-reactive voice, for example. So what if we ask adult? Mostly I think adults, truly in their adult or inner parent space, would say that, yeah, life is fair. It's equally unfair to everyone. It's fair that all of us didn't get what we needed. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world and all that. We come to a place of acceptance, at least to a degree. Continuing to think about it in terms of fair versus unfair is kind of dangerous, though. I don't want you to hear that you deserve the pain you got, and frankly, the world does have evil in it. You and I just needed our pain to grow. 
It is what it is. Who grows and changes when they are happy and content? Here's where we become ready to take the big step then. When we move toward a more differentiated, responsible, truly mature adult position, are you ready? We stop feeling the need to ask the question. We become de-enmeshed with the rest of the world and what it's doing. We realize that the things that happen to us and around us are what we need to grow and learn. We accept them more fully and peacefully. We realize that everyone is walking around in an adult body with a hurting kid and an angry teenager inside, and most are unaware of it. We exude calm and grace. We love and accept others. We have good boundaries and healing, so angry teenager becomes obsolete. We are able to truly connect with others without any manipulation, and we're finally peaceful. So what do you think about fairness now? Well, that's what I have for you today. If you enjoy my videos, please feel free to share them via social media or forward the link to someone who you know who might like to watch them. Um, and if you'd like to make an appointment with me, please email me at nancy at healingheartsofindy.com and I'll be happy to help you. Thanks for watching.